What up, Marsh Pod? Getting into uh, some Tuesday night hoops action in Sim World Hoops tonight. Uh, we're talking OGs. Continue to rumble tumble down the standings. Look out. Uh, it's no guarantee they're a top two seed at this point. And a new look in Showtime uh, that should mean something. Let's get to it. All right, a massive night uh, in SimWorld Hoops action. Uh, but first, we're going to start with, obviously, the, the big news of Tuesday uh, is the Bronny James news. Um, I have nothing to say from a reporting standpoint. I have no hot take outside of and it's not a hot take. Hey, let's hope the kid is okay. Uh, really, obviously, a scary situation. We've seen cardiac arrest issues um, in... National spotlight, and we've seen it in not national spotlight, but I think it'd be remiss if we started talking about Showtime basketball, which we're gonna, and we didn't say anything about, hey, we hope we hope he's okay. What does it mean for Showtime? That's not what we're actually going to talk about with them, and guess what? It doesn't matter what it means for Showtime. Uh, it doesn't matter what it means because what actually matters is his health, and so it's obviously hope for a speedy recovery because you never want something like this, and just mostly a recovery to life. Basketball is going to be secondary, you would assume, for him in the near future, and that's okay. So let's hope that everything goes well there, but great to see he's out of the ICU. All right, let's shift gears. We'll, we'll give Showtime a little break before we revisit them. Let's start with the team that uh, can't buy a win, that now you wonder was a nine-game winning streak totally fluky, or did they somehow, you know, just... Stop figuring out how to win. The Originators lose to Philadelphia, 81-74. Um, Nas Hall, let's just not start there. 33 points, 14 of 20. He had a phenomenal game. Scored 33 with just two three-pointers attempted. Went, went two for two there. And then three of four from the free throw line. So he was just getting it going uh, inside the paint, get the midi going, uh, Nas Hall. Nas Hall's a great basketball player, and guess what? He played 20 minutes in this game, uh, so we should have seen more from him, but he was incredible. But the originators, here's the thing. This is what's played them in this latest losing streak. They're, they're secondary guys, and it's, it's eerily similar to Lone Star. We saw this with Lone Star. We continue to see it with Lone Star, is the guys after their superstar are not playing well. In Lone Star, we, we did the deep dive. I've talked about the deep dive. The guys behind Jace Miguez, especially Ninny Gibson, you look at Derek Long, they just weren't showing up, and they, and they really haven't been. And for OGs, the reason that they've been struggling is not because of DJ Wagner. Sure, he went 1 of 5 from deep, but he went 11 of 19 from the floor. But it's another bad night from Kadarius Loftus, 4 of 11 shooting. Uh, Jared Quinney, inefficient, 2 of 5. Tyrone Snyder, 2 for 8 from the floor, uh, 5 points. Victor Silgoskis was good, 15 points, or excuse me, 15 boards, 13 points, but he's a big man. He, he He's going to walk into 10 points. They did a not bad good job, again, of going out there and being impactful in the paint. Nas Hall getting 33 points on 18 shots inside the three-point arc is, is outrageous. You cannot have that happen if you are a potential defensive player of the year. And this is what I talked about in a brief back and forth, is that Victor Silgoskis is in the same exact vein that Rudy Gobert was. When Rudy was winning Defensive Player of the Years, he was putting up incredible block numbers, he was putting up incredible rebound numbers, but nobody, no basketball player in the NBA was afraid of him because they knew they could beat him very easily because what he does so great is also his Achilles heel. He's inefficient, Rudy Gobert, in any other way besides being a paint defender. He's just not. The Warriors, every single time they played the Jazz, was almost as if they wanted to play him because you knew exactly what they were going to do. You're going to engage him in the pick and roll with a three-point shooting point guard who's going to force him to come out outside of the paint, above the free throw line. He's not athletic enough to defend the paint, uh, with a charging guard or a charging wing, he's not uh, athletic enough to defend a three-point line on a guy that can pull up and shoot. It's why he got put uh, meme-worthy in the spin cycle by Steph Curry. 
that's the issue that Victor Sogoskis runs into. Is he a phenomenal paint defender? You betcha. But is he anything beyond that on the defensive side of the ball? And he's not. He cannot be a versatile defender for a basketball team that lacks wing defenders. Kadarius Loftus just hasn't been that. Jared Quinney is not a great wing defender. Um, I've talked about that the fact that their backup big man is literally the great value version of their starting big man. It doesn't work. And we're seeing that now not work for the originators. I don't want to panic. I don't want to panic for the originators. But at this point, I have no idea what else I'm supposed to do. Sure, I should go look at that nine-game winning streak in which they beat teams like Bay Area by four, uh, Best Coast Ballers by nine, Raining Trays by 15, Showtime Basketball by two. I should look at those games and feel, hey, I feel pretty good about this. Southeast Select by 10. But then they lose three games, and that will four games, uh, excuse me, three games, I was right, to the AT Aliens, Okay, good, not great. Get smoked by Run DMV. A great basketball team, but you'd like that to be competitive. And then a, a competitive, I guess, but they, they only won one quarter and it was the fourth. They entered the fourth quarter down by 11. So what am I supposed to do with this? If what you're giving me most recently is who you are, then there can't be any faith in the originators. I do trust Coach, Coach Dodge. I will say it, and we'll have a podcast where we talk about who did I vote for. Because as somebody mentioned, and I 100% agree, transparency is what's needed for these all-star and, and and award voting. Coach Dodge is my coach of the year. Do I regret that decision? No, I don't think so. But I also don't know if I trust this team. All right, second game, second team that we want to talk about. Showtime basketball playing an emotional game against Bay Area Breakers. This was a game that you would expect Showtime to get up to, right? We've talked about this. Showtime is is... It's showtime. If the lights are on, showtime's ready to ball. If the lights are not on, well, showtime doesn't really like to get up for those types of games. Well, they got up for it, and they got up for it without their best dude, and they got up for it because of Corey Yams. 28 points from Corey Yams, 15 boards, 4 assists, 14 of 18 shooting. This was reported on weeks ago that showtime had some concerns about within the locker room, about the fact that, look, they're not, there's no versatility. Coach Joyner has not done an efficient job. This is not reporting. This is my opinion. He has not done an efficient job of getting diversity of this basketball team on offense. He let Israel Vines sit on the bench after scoring 10 points in four minutes. Guess what Israel Vines did, given a long leash to run? 17 points in 17 minutes, 7 of 11 shooting. Hey, coach, maybe you should have been playing more. But that's not the point of this. We're not bashing on Coach Joyner. But they were put in a very disadvantageous situation. This should have been a blowout for Bay Area. And guess what? It wasn't that. So what did we learn from this one? Corey Yams and Israel Vines need to be featured more. Israel Vines didn't play enough and he played 17 minutes. Corey Yams didn't play enough and he played all but five. Corey Yams is, whether it's here or elsewhere, Corey Yams is going to be phenomenal next season. And this was the proof of it. We have been begging for big games from Corey Yams. And where we were wrong was we were asking him to do it. What we should have been doing is saying, Coach Joyner, Coach Smith before him, put put the ball in this dude's hands and let him cook. Because when he does, he's dynamic. And he was last night. So, Again, from the jump, we want Bronny James to be healthy. We want him playing because he's that fun to watch. I doubt he comes back the rest of the season. I don't see that as a as an option. He's got bigger things to play for than a Sim World Hoops championship. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but he does. I doubt he comes back. But Showtime just put the smack down on Bay Area because Israel Vines and Corey Yams cooked them. They sautéed them. They put them over the broiler to get a little crispiness on the end. They deep fried them. They allowed four points in the third quarter. Bay Area, what are we doing? My goodness. So if there's any positive to be gained from this, and there's not, there's no positive from a life standpoint, but from a basketball standpoint, if you're Showtime, you're not pulling this and saying this is a good thing that happened. It's not a good thing that Bronny James went through what he's going through. But, and the the dreaded but, Corey Yams 
got an opportunity, and he took full advantage of it. Israel Vines got an opportunity, and he took full advantage of it. This team is dangerous. They were dangerous before. They're even more dangerous now. And if we're worried about the originators, I think we should be worried about Bay Area too. We'll talk to you Wednesday.